So as you know, uh, over the weekend, the Minister of Justice, Kerry Allen, who'd done such excellent work in getting rid of that silly pilot scheme to pay uh, public defence lawyers extra if they, they got their plant, uh, clients to plead guilty or people to plead guilty at first hearing, um, Kerry Allen has gone, turned around and spoiled all that, spoiled all that by doing an interview over the weekend with uh, Jessica Much Mackay from um, Q&A on TVNZ, I think it was, and she basically said, I promise, though no one's asking for this promise, I promise to have hate speech, and I'm going to call them anti-free speech laws, um, introduced, debated and passed by the time of the next election. And depending when that is, that doesn't give her a lot of time. Um, and as I mentioned on the front page of the uh, Dominion Post this morning and regularly in state-funded media and state-funded documentaries, one of which will air tonight, the government is creating, trying to create an atmosphere of fear around disinformation, fear about hate speech and fear that the idea of people freely sharing their ideas across uh, the internet is somehow the biggest threat we have, the biggest violent, uh, alongside COVID and climate change, is the biggest threat to humanity that we know. And gosh, people have just got to stop talking to each other in, unless it is in ways that are approved. There has also been much criticism in the last couple of days that Christopher Luxon, uh, the relatively newly minted um, former McDonald's employee and head of the National Party, has been relatively slow and relatively vanilla or sanguine in his criticism of Kerry Allen's comments and the government's general tenor towards freedom of speech. Well, one party that hasn't been and has come out with some very clear statements is the ACT Party, and we are joined now by ACT Party leader David uh, Seymour. David, nice to have you with us again. Um, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Sean. All right. Um, Look, I don't know why Kerry Allen had to make a promise for what I am going to call anti-free speech laws. They're not hate speech laws. They're suppression of speech laws. Um, who is she promising this to? Who wants it in New Zealand? Do you have any idea? No, it's. Uh, I'd say it's not a promise. It's a threat. And it seems to be a threat against civil society. Uh, who wants it? Uh, I, I can only imagine that there are people in the Labour Party who genuinely believe that speech is dangerous but are totally naive to the dangers of a censor who will have to decide whether or not a person is in, inciting disharmony uh, with an intention to stir up, maintain or normalise hatred through communications that are threatening, abusive or insulting. I mean, that, that's the definition that they're using. And the problem with it that they don't seem to understand is that all sorts of people could be guilty of that all the time. Whether or not you're prosecuted is entirely in the mind of the prosecutor and the so-called victim. Mm. Does it not also codify, if you like, who can be a victim? by saying you have to be a, a part of a vulnerable or protected group. Well, of course, it, it depends who you think a, a vulnerable or protected group is. Um, the ACT Party stands up for a, a vulnerable group that needs protection. Um, actually, we call them net taxpayers. In fact, we've got lots of vulnerable groups that need protection. Um, landlords, farmers, small business owners, um, really anyone... But you know those people are not anything. anywhere by the Human Rights Commission or anyone else, codified as um, vulnerable groups because they're not LGBTQI, um, they're not disabled, they're not uh, immigrant, uh, they're not people of colour, they are not Māori. It is the protections, supposed protections, that anti-free speech laws will provide would seem to me to be only protections for a specific group of New Zealanders rather than protections which they are not really, for all of us. Well, it's, it's such an interesting debate because the way you've characterised the Human Rights Commission's prejudices is, is probably correct. But one thing I would say to people um, who might be in favour of these laws is that's right now. 
Um, you know, if you really want to give a, this kind of power to a government agency under the law, then you better be real sure that someday the political winds won't change and you'll have an agency with a different set of prejudices able to decide who it prosecutes or I would say persecutes. Um, you know, it's like that old song, when you point the finger because your plan fell through, there's three more fingers pointing back at you. Uh, and I just urge song people I've to never heard of, David, be in favour of these laws. Yeah. To um, get... <laughs> David, could I also say there clearly is in mainstream media and through groups like the Disinformation Project, and through funded documentaries, another one called Web of Chaos, which is playing on TVNZ tonight and features a man who has a um, temporary protection order against him for terrorising a couple of people in New Zealand. Um, there is an atmosphere and a mood being created by the government and agencies of government to what would seem to me seed fear about freedom of speech and fear about the internet. Um, I have looked at this for some time and I can no longer say this is all accidental. It looks like a coordinated campaign to create distrust and a certain moral panic amongst New Zealanders. Well, I'm always a bit cautious of giving this government too much credit. Um, people say that they're engaging in all sorts of coordinated campaigns, but then I look at their promise to get light rail built by last year and uh, build 100,000 houses and uh, you know control the cost of living and end child poverty and <laughs> reduce climate emissions. Mm. I mean, are you sure that this government is carrying out a, a coordinated campaign? I guess if they are, we can at least be assured it, it probably won't be effective. However, the, the, this change in the law to ban free speech, to enforce hate speech pro uh, uh, prohibitions, you know, that is dangerous and that does need to be changed and ACT is campaigning to win the election and ensure the next government, whoever else is in it, makes sure that that law is repealed. OK, so that is a uh, cast iron definite promise, no ifs, no buts, no maybes. Look, there's no way that the Nats are going to be able to say, oh, well, you know, a bit of hate speech law is OK. Uh, we will force them to remove it. it. It cannot stand in our statute books. Are you disappointed with the National Party's less than definitive response to these and other policies of the current administration? Um, well, not not really, because a, I mean, the, you know, the Nats have always tried to straddle the centre ground. I mean, they've been doing it for 90 years. So um, anyone that hasn't caught on yet, you know, you, you don't really have much room to be disappointed. It's just the way they are. Um, what is critical is that we don't only change the government, but strengthen that coalition uh, with some more act in it in order that, you know, we really can make these changes happen. Because what I say to people say, oh, you know, what's your bottom line? I say, look, uh, if there's two act MPs and 59 Nats in the 61, it's going to be pretty hard. Uh, if there's 15 ACT MPs and 50 odd of them, uh, then it's going to be very easy for us to say, actually, you know, we've got a mandate to change this. Uh, we'll fight with whatever hand we're played, but, you know, people there have an opportunity to help. All right. Um, just on another matter, what are you guys going to do in Hamilton West in the by-election? Uh, so ACT has decided to stand a candidate and um, all will be revealed uh, at our campaign launch on Thursday. Oh, so Thursday this week you'll be announcing who that candidate is? Yep, yep, we'll be doing so it. So you've I already picked a, them? A, just after work. You've already picked them? Well, I, I couldn't possibly say, Sean. We've got to keep a bit of suspense here. OK, would it be an idea? Sorry, I've got to do some digging. It's my job. Um, would you take someone from your current caucus who is an MP and put them in there, or are you looking for some fresh blood? Well, we, we, we're very fortunate, um, and if you look at the people that have applied to run, that we've got both. So um, we'll see you on Thursday. All right. What time is that? Just look, like I'm just putting it in the diary now. <laughs> I'll, I'll send something. I'll send something through to you, Sean. Yeah. All but, right. Uh, you'll know by Thursday night. All right. Um, so you will repeal these laws. You are not disappointed that National says it won't, but you would hold their feet to the fire were you to be in government with them uh, post the election? 
Yeah, and, you know, I mean, look, I always say to people, I didn't vote for MMP. I was in Standard 3 uh, at the time. Um, if you voted for MMP, then good on you. But it's the system we've got now. And uh, one of the roles that a party like ACT plays is, is to hold their feet to the fire on some of these critical issues. And, you know, you saw us do it um, on fair firearm laws against those rush changes. You've seen us do it on the Zero Carbon Act. You've seen us do it on free speech. You'll see us do it on this co-government issue. Uh, and you'll also see us do it on things like tax and economic policy. Uh, there needs to be another force to ensure that the next national government doesn't just bed in Jacinda Ardern's worldview the same way that John Key bedded in Helen Clark's. All right, David Seymour, I thank you very much indeed for your time. We look forward to the news on Thursday as to who is running uh, for ACT in the Hamilton West uh, by-election. That, right, that is the leader of the ACT Party, of the ACT Party, David Seymour. He says, Kerry Allen's hate speech, anti-free speech, speech suppression laws, go. Um, oh, apparently our friend Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Group project has just been on another rather lower late rating uh, talk show called, uh, I think, Yesterday FM. Um, um, and she was banging on about the three top worries for cybercrime, which is what, of course, Stuff and its coordinated woke campaign had uh, on its front page today. Um, <laughs> apparently the host of this particular show said, we need more Kate Hannas in the world. Ah! Ah! That makes uh, me laugh. Kate Hanna, head of the Disinformation Project, will not say who actually pays her wages. We could speculate it's a Silicon Valley billionaire from overseas, plays it through a trust, has the ear of the Prime Minister, gets free accommodation at a university, has refused repeatedly to appear on the platform, is lauded by mainstream media as an expert, even though her methodology is woefully lacking and uh, has accused uh, Mr Espin, Ben Esper and I of being a threat to people at a closed-door briefing, one of which is being held in, in Auckland this week and one in Wellington next week. The platform has been excluded on spurious grounds uh, from doing uh, that. Uh, so, of course, of course, Media Works are singing the praises of Kate Hanna um, because they wouldn't know journalism if it jumped up and bit them on the bottom.